Hey guys, it's Brickman117. Welcome back to the channel and the overview video for the Ultimate Banished AA Gun. That's right, it's finally finished. The mock is complete and I'm going to take you guys right through it. I'm going to show you all the details shortly, but before we do that, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you one more time to Mega Constructs for their support with this build. Their generous donation of parts and sets have been absolutely essential to the completion of this build. There is no way I would have been able to complete this mock without their support. So to all those involved, I thank you one last time. It's been both an honour and a pleasure to receive your support throughout this build. I thought the best way to begin this overview would be to discuss the inspiration of the build and that came in the form of the Mega Constructs Defense Point Showdown set released last year. At the time of making this video this set is still currently available from most Mega Constructs retailers and if you'd like to know my thoughts on this set you can watch my review by visiting my channel. But to summarize my overall thoughts of this set were generally positive even though the set was, for obvious reasons, grossly undersized. And of course, me being me, spotted an opportunity to rectify that situation. And so the latest Ultimate build was born, so let's get into it. What you can see in front of you right now is the main body or the control room section of the original set created by Mega Constructs. The reason I've stripped it down like this is because this is how I built this Ultimate mock. I've built it modular, so it's easy or in fact possible to store it or move it. It's just no way you'd be able to do that if it was just one big lump. So I went to great lengths to make sure that I could strip it down and rebuild it as and where I wanted to. Now the reason I started with the central body is because I felt that was going to be pivotal to the strength required to make sure this thing stood half a chance of standing up under its own weight. Not to mention the fact that this is the only part of the mock that I stood any chance of being able to have figures go inside of. And if you've seen the gameplay trailer released at E3, you'll know that the Chief does go up inside one of these guns into a control room. And as soon as I saw that, I just knew that I had to make this big enough to be able to have, at the very least, the Chief interact inside this, as well as any other figures that you wanted to be able to put in there for future dioramas. So although I can't say that this is strictly figure scale, because we don't actually know the full scale of these guns yet, there's not enough information known about them at the time of this video. What I can say is it's close enough. When you offer the chief figure that comes with the Defense Point Showdown set up against the main body of the actual set, you can see he's not gonna fit inside there. In fact, that two by four printed tile is there to emulate the opening that you see on either side of the control room when he's inside of that control room. So yeah, very, very under scale for what it is, but again, for obvious reasons. And here it is, the first part of the mock, the control room, all finished and ready to go. So I'm gonna show you right through this shortly, but before I do so, I'm just going to place down the body of the original set for a size comparison. And as you can see, it is absolutely dwarfed by the ultimate mock. The thing I'm most pleased with about here is it was incredibly difficult creating the shape of this body and to make it strong as well was a real challenge. But we'll see just how strong I made it later on when we try and put the legs and the gun on top just to see if it can really handle the weight of all of these blocks. But as I rotate it, you can see I managed to stay true to the shape of the gun relatively well. So I ended up being really pleased with that because I can assure you it was not easy. As I show you each individual section of the mock, I'm gonna give you a few facts and figures about it as we go along, because I know I'm gonna get the questions in the comments section. So to preempt that, I'm gonna give them to you now. So I can't tell you how many pieces we used in this center section, but I can tell you that it's 26 inches long, 17 inches at its widest point, and eight inches tall, and it weighs 5.8 kilograms. So it's already a heck of a lump of Mega Constructs pieces, but there is so much more to come. The height of this thing, once we get it all together, is gonna to be ginormous, as is the length and the width. It takes up a lot of room. 
So as you can see, as it rotates on the turntable, I have put quite a lot of effort into exterior detailing, but that's just the way I am. I can't help myself. Every area of this mock from every angle, I want to try to make it look finished. You'll also notice that I try to avoid exposed studs. There are exposed studs on the top cover of this mock, but that's relatively unavoidable for a number of reasons that I won't go into right now. But as we bring the camera in a little bit closer, for me, this is the shot that makes this mock all worthwhile, to be honest with you. Filming in through this door aperture and seeing the Chief just coming up from that gravity lift, just like in that gameplay clip, ready to walk across this room, push the button on the console, and you guys know the rest. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching this video. But for me, it really makes it worthwhile. I feel like I've captured that scene relatively well, just in this shot alone. One thing that was important to me was that I had easy access to the control room for placing figures and so on. So as you can see here, I made it very easy to remove the entire roof section of the control room. I also incorporated lighting into this roof section. You may have seen that in one of the previous build sections, but if you haven't, I will show you later on. And when this thing's fully lit up, it lights up like a Christmas tree, so you've got that to look forward to shortly. With the roof off, you can see you've got much better access to the control room to be able to see all of the details. And you can see by these photos that I've strung together here, I really did go to town with some of the detailing inside here. This is completely made up based on nothing but my own imagination. I just wanted to give it that banished feel, and so I did. Another thing that I made up with this build was I incorporated a small armory into the front section of the control room that goes towards the forward leg. And again, this is completely made up. I just had the space available, so I felt it was a, uh, a wise use of the space. And I just felt that it would be a nice little addition to the overall mock. The final thing to show you for the control room are the two gunner platforms hanging off either side of the build, which I was particularly pleased with how they worked out because they weren't very easy to do, believe it or not. On each platform we've got two shields which can be rotated or adjusted or simply removed altogether. They're just on there with one jumper plate which gives you a lot of flexibility to how you pose them. I also put on two plasma turrets on either side as well. These are the ones that we've been getting for donkey's years that usually come with a trans blue cone but to make them more banished like I just swap those cones out for some trans red ones and voila you have banished turrets. And that's it for the control room, so time to move on to the legs. When it comes to the legs, this was once again a bit of an engineering nightmare. Given that the main control room already weighed nearly six kilos without the gun on top, I knew these legs were going to have to take some serious load. It was always my intention to have lots of gravity lift pieces from the old Phantom set supporting the back of the control room, but I was hoping I wouldn't have to do too much additional bracing under the front of the control room with clear blocks. We'll see how that worked out later on in the video. But back to the leg. So I started by building the actual main foot of the leg first, then I moved on to the power cell on top and then the stilts underneath with a final part. And it's once again a relatively large build in itself and bear in mind I had to build three of those so that did get a little bit frustrating having to repeat it three times but it was worth it in the end and I'm thoroughly happy with the end design you see in front of you now. Dimensions for this are 16 inches long, 17 inches tall and 5 inches wide. As we take a closer look at the top section of the leg, you'll see once again I got very carried away with exterior detailing, none of which I would imagine is very accurate to the in-game gun, but I've mentioned many times before this isn't a like-for-like -like replica, this is a mock, this is just something I wanted to create and put my own stamp on, so I wanted to make it interesting, and yeah, I think I got away with that, I think I've made it interesting, maybe too interesting for some people's liking, but the overall look for me is a lot more interesting than some of the bland surfaces shown on the actual in-game gun. It's also worth mentioning at this point that there is lighting inside the power cells, which once again you will see later on when this thing's all put together. There's also lighting coming out underneath of each foot to light up the leg section of each leg, so that gives a, a slightly 
different look underneath the legs as it does above the legs. As we move down to the stilts, I got really crazy down here. I wanted these things to look really mechanical. I wanted them to look like they can actually function as if they could move up and down to help level the gun when it's on uneven ground. And once again, I just completely made this up. I did use the in-game images as reference, but I didn't try to follow them too closely. I just wanted to have a bit of fun and see what I could create. And again, once again, really pleased with the outcome. The only downside to it was, was building six of them wasn't that much fun. It got pretty boring. So I tried to make the internals of each leg, the kind of power nodes that hang off towards the center of each foot. I made those different ever so slightly on each one just to make it a little bit more interesting. And before we move on to the main gun, this is what it looks like if you offer up one of the standard feet from the original mock alongside it, just for a size comparison to give you a sense of scale again. As you can see, once again, the mock leg absolutely dwarfs the original set. So that's that. Now the time to move on to the main bit, the big gun. And here it is, the BFG. This thing is an absolute monster. It's really hard to show you exactly how big this thing is. It was by far the most challenging part of the mock. It definitely chewed up the most pieces and technically it was an absolute nightmare, but I got there in the end. It was a hard slog, it took a long time, but I think it was well worth the perseverance. So how big is this thing? Well, it's just over 37 inches long, 16 inches tall at its highest point in this current elevation and 18 inches wide when it's in firing mode, which I will show you very shortly. And to top it off, it's the heaviest piece of the mock as well at 6.2 kilos. So once again, as we see this thing rotate on the turntable, you can see I've absolutely packed it with detail, left no stone unturned. It is once again got interior lighting, which you will see very shortly once I've put all these pieces together. It also has two different modes. It has this mode you see at the moment, which is just its closed down or idle mode. And then it has firing mode, which looks like this. And as you can see, once you put the gun into firing mode, the back flaps open up, some vents open up on the top as well, and it just completely transforms the look of the gun. And when the lights are on, it makes it look even more impressive. So to put it into firing mode, it's really simple. You just open these flaps here, which are hinged at the back, and then you can rotate these wing pieces up, which are actually, I think, banshee pieces just repurposed in silver. And then you've got these tiny flaps on the top, which you can lift up as well, just to make the gun look a little bit more dynamic. On the inside of the venting flaps, there's some additional functionality with these tiny little sections here, which again, you can just tilt out just to make those flaps look again a little bit more dynamic. And the benefit of this design is as you close the flaps, these small sections just automatically close themselves as they hit the body of the gun. So you don't have to worry about them getting trapped or anything like that. So just before I start to put this thing together for you to show you the end result, I'm just going to give a hands free tour of the gun just so you can see all of the detail because I realized in one of the previous videos that I showed this gun and I didn't actually really give you a flyby very well over the whole gun. So I'm sure those that have been following the build from the beginning will appreciate this little spin around the gun, just showing you all the detail as best as I can. Apologies if some of it's slightly out of focus, the camera was struggling with the lighting, but I'm sure all you long time followers of the build would appreciate a tour. After all, it has been nearly five months since I've started it. So for those of you that have stuck with it throughout the time, I thank you. This is a good opportunity before we put it together just to remind everyone if you're new to the channel don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that like button if you're enjoying this content and also feel free to leave any comments in the section below for me to read i do enjoy reading all your comments and i try to reply to as many as i can and i think as this flyby comes to an end i can't put it off any longer at this point of me creating this video i haven't actually yet put this whole thing together to see if it will take the weight with the gun on the body, on the stilts. So I've got no idea what's gonna happen. So to say I'm a little bit nervous about piling all these bits on top of each other would be the understatement of the century. But here we go, can't put it off any longer. Ta-da, it worked. You have no idea how pleased and relieved I am that this actually all went together and worked. I'm shocked at how strong this thing is. 
I knew I'd need the grav tubes at the back and fully anticipated having to have clear blocks at the front underneath the front section of the control room but there's absolutely no need for it whatsoever in fact unbelievably I don't even need the grav tubes at the back I have left them there because it definitely looks better with them rather than without them it just doesn't seem like the mock's complete without them so I have left them there and it's kind of a backup brace just in case something else was to let go but this leg design is so strong I can actually apply a huge amount of pressure onto the top of the control room before the gun's placed and it just feels like it could take two or three times the weight of that gun it is really really surprised me how strong this setup is so that's a good bonus and yeah I can basically leave it like this now which is really good I'm not as concerned about stripping it down although obviously I will when I want to move it or pack it away so hopefully you guys like the end result here I'm certainly pleased with that I'm relieved it's over it has been a really long build and I'm pretty satisfied with the overall end result uh, dimension some of them are a bit questionable but I think everybody knows what it is and it's uh, yeah it's good enough for me I'm pleased I'm, I'm glad it's worked out better than I was worried it would about halfway through the build so once again I think another successful ultimate build I will show you it with the lights on very shortly but before we uh, move on to the lights I just want to remind you that this mock as is actually going to be used as the centerpiece for a large scale diorama if you saw some of the previous videos you would have seen this section here which was me just giving an example of how I plan to situate this mock into a fully fledged jungle style environment as we see in Halo Infinite. So you may wait a while for that video because I could do with a break to be honest with you but when I do create that video it will be featuring all of the rest of the Halo Infinite sets and a vast amount of figures. So that's going to be on a slightly larger board than it's on now. Um, so yeah it's, uh, it's going to be a really big diorama. So now that it's finished, the overall dimensions of the mock are 51 inches long, 32 inches wide and 35 inches tall. And total weight with all those parts rounded up is as good as 21 kilos of block. And as for the size comparison, here it is with the original set. Uh, the original set is missing the stilts. I had to use them for the mock, so those bits are missing, plus a couple of other minor bits, but you still get an appreciation for the size difference from the original set. And I also chucked in a few additional sets for you because I thought you'd appreciate seeing what it looks like with some of the other infinite line sets. It will also give you an idea of what that diorama is going to look like once I've featured all these sets into it. As you can see, most of these sets do scale pretty well to the in-game gun. Obviously, as I say, we haven't seen it yet, so we don't know for sure. But this is what I had in mind. You can see from this thumbnail from episode one of this build five months back, this is what I envisioned doing. You can see on this picture here, and this is what we actually ended up with. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with the end result. It kind of worked out how I wanted it to, so really pleased. Right, now, with all that said... Let's get the final bit done. Let's see what this bad boy looks like when it's lit up like a Christmas tree. Here you go. Enjoy, guys. You've earned it.